You're kidding. A little punk tries to throw me off a train. We get into a fight and he falls off. Cops ask me why I did a thing like that. I tell them why. For three hours, I tell them why. They don't believe me. There's nothing like taking a tight corner or punching the red line down a straight on a sport bike. That said, on a long trip, sport bikes have a lot of drawbacks that other bikes don't. I've broken up this topic into several sections. Gear, positions, mentality, and of course, packing. Here are some tips to enjoying a long ride with a sport bike. The right gear for the weather and the road. Atgat still applies, but if you have an option of wearing a vented or ballistic jacket over your heavy leather one, and you know that the forecast is calling for a heat wave, take the comfortable option. Just remember that it might still rain, and if you don't have a liner or the room to pack it, you may get drenched. A comfortable helmet. So you picked a new helmet just before the trip. It looks so sweet. But will it become your worst nightmare when on the road? Even if there's just a tiny pressure point, it may become a torture device a few hours into your trip and ruin your entire enjoyment. Think of someone pushing the blunt end of a pencil into your forehead with just a few pounds of force and you will better understand how the wind can dial up the pain that wasn't there when you were wearing the helmet in the store. So be sure to wear the helmet in the store for as long as possible before throwing down the cash and then take it for a few short day trips before taking it on your epic adventure. The right backpack. If you wear a backpack, make sure it's not too heavy and has air channels to allow some airflow on your back. You'll still be hotter than without one, but the vent will give you a little bit of relief compared to one without. Wear earplugs. The sound of wind in your ears is fun for short trips, but even an hour can be close to torture. In fact, studies have shown that it's not just volume that can damage hearing. The sound's duration can also play a large part in how much damage can occur. Headphones. The sound of wind can also be monotonous. Music can be just what you need. Plan out a few long playlists ahead of time. Getting a good pair of earbuds can kill two birds with one stone regarding the point said earlier. Get a headset communicator. Another option is to get a communicator like a Senna or a Scala. And of course, there's a lot of options to choose from beyond those. Not only can they connect to your phone or iPod, allowing voice control, they can also help pass the time on less challenging roads with a fellow rider. Being able to talk about where the next turn is can also be extremely handy. Being that you will be on unfamiliar roads, having your phone give you directions through your headset is a huge benefit as well. Just make sure not to use the flat speaker discs included, if at all possible. You won't be able to hear anything at highway speeds, and you may damage your hearing from wind noise over long trips. Riding position. I've tried several positions over the years. <laughs> good, good one. And keeping my legs scrunched up is actually more comfortable over long distances than when I rest my heel on the peg for just a slightly less tight stance. That said, the most effective riding position is all of them. Make sure you move around from time to time on your bike. Your body was never meant to sit in any position for too long, especially the ones that sport bikes usually have you in. Shift your weight around. Sit forward, then sit farther back. Move your feet from being perched on the toe to the heel. Think of every position and try it out for a few minutes. Take breaks often. The old saying, a stitch in time saves nine, applies here. In other words, taking a small break more often will mean that you have more energy to ride longer and see more. Plus, this is all about the journey. If you just wanted to get from hotel to hotel, then take a flight instead. Practice makes perfect. Practice with a few smaller day trips of increasing length before your big trip. And just like getting ready for a marathon, you have to train before the big day. Drink water regularly. When riding, you can get dehydrated very easily and not even be aware of it. By the time you realize it, it may be too late. You need to be 100% present when riding, so keeping hydrated is essential. Keep your visor clean. It may seem like a small thing, but having a clean visor isn't just about safety. Having to look around an unfortunately placed bug splat all day can drain your energy and detract from your overall experience. Bring only what you need. This is one I struggle with often. I usually go by the motto, it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. The problem with this motto is on a bike, it will load you down with stuff that if not used, just took up space for no reason and possibly made you uncomfortable the whole trip. Don't bring only what you need. Okay, I know I just said the opposite, but make sure that you have certain things that if an accident or a breakdown occurred, you would at least not be stranded in the middle of nowhere. If all you packed were a few clothes and your phone, you might regret packing too light. 
Items to bring along might include a basic first aid kit, a portable charger for your phone, a multi-tool, a small flashlight with emergency flash option, something like a granola bar as well as a bottle of water. One last thing to consider would be a pair of shoes. Motorcycle boots are not only fine, they're essential on a bike. But once you're done for the day and want to tour around, they can be the bane of your existence, especially if it's hot out. Bring a pair of surgical gloves. If you're planning on a trip late or early in the season, it may get cold depending on where you go. I always pack a pair of surgical gloves in my bag. They help cut out the wind and give a surprising amount of insulation inside your outer gloves. They also keep your hands dry if it rains heavily. They can be scrunched up into a very small ball, so if they don't get used, it's not a big deal. The best way to pack it all. Now that you have a list of what you want to bring, what are the best ways to pack it? Everyone has their own way, but over the years, I've picked up a few tricks. Don't fold your clothes, roll them. Roll each of your shirts, pants, underwear, etc., and face them upwards. This keeps them relatively wrinkle-free, and everything is accessible without having to pull apart your bag for something you put on the bottom. Make sure you get a tail bag that can expand. On your trip, you might pick up something along the way, and if your bag is packed to capacity, you may be forced to make some hard choices. An expandable tail bag will help a lot. Personally, I prefer soft bags over hard cases, since they can accommodate some things that hard cases might not. Make sure everything is balanced. If you have the ability to add saddlebags, don't load all of your heavy stuff on one side or you'll feel it at higher speeds or flicking right and left in the corners. Duct tape saves lives. Take several feet of duct tape and wrap it around a small tube like a copper pipe. Recently on a trip when a friend's zipper broke on his tail bag, I was able to close the bag without having to drag around an entire roll. Ride your own ride. This is true for any time you ride, but here it is especially true. You might be on unfamiliar roads and the leader thinks he is competing for the MotoGP title and is forcing you to ride outside of your comfort zone if you want to keep up. Be sure to know where you're going before you head out and then take it at your own pace. If you have a communicator, tell him that if he really wants to go that fast, that you'll catch up with him at the next scheduled stop. Ideally, it's best to ride with your buddy as it means you can look out for each other. But if he's not willing to slow his roll, then this is the next best option. Hopefully with these tips you can see that it's possible to take a sport bike on a long road trip. Uh, I mean it's possible. It won't exactly be riding in comfort, but with a little planning, you can still have the time of your life. If you like this video and what I do here on this channel, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Clicking the bell on the bottom right is the best way to stay up to date when a new rocket flick is available. Until then, I'll see you out there.